No grief for anybody. We know the grief for anybody. This 2024, eh? We know the grief for anybody. Hello Warriors, how are you all doing? Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Shimo Bishison. And if you are a return viewer, thank you for coming back. There's a new slogan, no grief for anybody. It's a popular Nigeria slogan. As long as this slogan could be a rebellion slogan, could be, I said, a rebellion slogan, we could also take something important out of this slogan. The way I look at situations is, no matter how demeaning people might think a situation or a word is, I look at it and navigate if there is something of benefit to me from that situation or from that utterances. So let's talk about this. Even the Nigerian police concluded that no grief for anybody's slogan could be a rebellion slogan. In the case that when people want to contest, when people want to protest for something, you can hear songs like, we no go agree, oh, we no go agree, we no go agree. So... I looked at it and I thought, no grief for anybody in the sense that don't allow any external factors to be an interest for you in 2024. Don't allow your friends, your family, your neighbors, anybody to put a stop or put a, you know, a delay in your progress towards your goals and your dreams. Having said that, when you look at external factors as an hindrance towards our personal development, sometimes these external factors is out of our reach to control. We might not be able to control a lot of external factors. It's like if you're thinking everybody will be nice to you, that's impossible because you are not in charge of their emotions. But you can always be in control of how you receive people even when they are not nice to you. So no grief for anybody. Let's leave people aside. No grief for yourself as well. No grief for yourself. No grief for yourself to allow yourself to be low in 2024. No grief for yourself to allow yourself not to grow in 2024. No grief for yourself to allow yourself not to start that thing that you've been planning for a very long time to start in 2024. No grief for yourself. You've been looking towards doing a particular thing. You've been looking towards going back to college. You've been looking towards activating your gift and your talent. You've been looking towards doing all other things. No grief for yourself. Think about yourself. So sometimes when we are dishing out or when we are looking for excuses that it is external factors that are affecting our progress, let's look at ourselves. No grief for yourself as well. Let's look at self-sabotaging ourselves and stop it. Self-sabotaging yourself could be what you are doing or what you are not doing to get to point B from point A. Let's say you are supposed to do a particular thing. You are not putting effort into doing it. You're self-sabotaging yourself. And let's say you are doing other stuff when you should be doing something else. You are self-sabotaging yourself. So before you go around and say, no grief for anybody, no grief for anybody, are you grieving for yourself if that's a word? What are the signs to pay attention to when we are talking about no grief for anybody? In this case, we are flipping it around, no grief for yourself. So for the likes of you that are familiar with the slogan, no grief for anybody, this video is for you. If you are not grieving for anybody, are you grieving for yourself? Are you allowing yourself negative side of you to influence your decision? Are you self-sabotaging yourself? In as much as the word no grief for anybody is a slogan of positivity, in my own opinion, it depends on how you use it. It's a, it's a word, it's, a, it's the same word, but it depends on how you use it. How you are, you are not going to allow you know, outside external factors to be an hindrance for you, you should also look into how you yourself will not be an hindrance for yourself. So when it comes to no grief for yourself, I'm going to share five points to flip it around about you not even grieving for yourself, not to talk about not grieving for anybody. Procrastination is your number one. If you're one of the people that procrastinate, we all procrastinate. Don't let anybody, you know, kind of put you down or make you feel inferior. We all procrastinate. But to a certain healthy level, if you're always procrastinating, you want to start something on a Monday, you keep pushing it. You keep pushing it. You keep pushing it. You're looking for a perfect time. There's never a perfect time for anything. So if you're the time that always procrastinate, when you're supposed to do something, you will not do it. When you're supposed to do something, you delay in doing it. You are going out with 
with your friends. You are always the one that is always late. You are always the one that people are always waiting for. You are always the one that is keeping the group in, 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 in a static motion. You will not allow them to move because they are waiting for you. When it comes to decision making, you are always the last person they are waiting for. That's procrastination. You cannot be shouting no grief for anybody. If you too, you don't allow yourself to go. If you are self-sabotaging yourself with procrastination, you are always procrastinating. Even when it comes to savings, you are always procrastinating. Oh, I will start when the year starts. Starting a new thing doesn't necessarily mean you have to start fresh in January. The moment you realize something is wrong, just fix and start. So if you're procrastinating and you're saying the slogan, no grief for anybody, what exactly are you saying? Are you like the hypocrite who say something else but do otherwise? They'll be saying something, but they'll be doing something else. That's an hypocrite. That's what the Bible describes an hypocrite to be. So if you're saying no grief for anybody, but you are, you are, you are not even, you are grieving for yourself to delay to bring yourself down, if that's the word. So you are not grieving even for yourself. You are not allowing yourself to move forward because you are always procrastinating. You are never doing the right thing at the right time. You are always focused on wasting your time on doing other things rather than focus on what you are supposed to do. You don't have to get it at first. You know, part of you failing is a sign of growth because you fail. You have a record to say, oh, I did it this way and I failed. Now I have to do it another way. That's a sign of growth. Failure doesn't mean you have to push it aside and keep procrastinating about your future. So if you are shouting, no grief for yourself, you are actually on the wrong side because what you are thinking, what you are saying is you are even grieving for yourself not to allow yourself to move forward. Number two, fear of failure. You want to do something. You have not even done it. You're already afraid that it's not going to work. You're going to fail. Have you even done it? Why are you even afraid of failure? Why will you be afraid of failure? If anybody is afraid of failure, they cannot be successful. Because success and failure, they go in line. It's part of the progress into your own journey. And for anybody who wants to record success, you should be able to embrace failure. So why are you afraid of failing? Why do you think you are bigger than people that are failing? Why do you think you are more, you are more superior, you are more, you know, better at failing than any other person? Maybe you are walking on the road and you slip and fall. And the tears that you are even crying is the tears of people who saw you falling. You are not even paying attention to your pain and your, you know, the wounds that you acquire from that falling. Don't be like that. That's a sign of pride in a subtle way. No grief for yourself. No grief for anybody. Is, is you stepping out of your comfort zone. Sometimes we say stepping out of your comfort zone. It might not be, you're, you might not be at that level yet. But fear of failure will kill your dreams. When you're afraid of stepping into a new thing, when you're af afraid of accepting the fact that people have been saying to you, you have a good voice. Oh, you have a good voice. Oh, your voice is good. But you still don't want to sing because you are afraid that people will judge your voice because it sounds in a way. Start where you are. It is even better for you to start and look back and laugh at yourself because what will make you laugh is a sign of growth that you have seen to say, oh, that's what I used to do. Oh, I don't do that anymore. I have grown. Why are you afraid? You've not done something. And you are afraid already. And you are shouting, no grief for anybody. And you are grieving for yourself to hold yourself bound. Number three, lack of planning. You don't know how to plan. When it comes to anything, whether you're budgeting, your life, your daily routine, everything about you, you don't have good planning. You are the likes of people, I know it's funny, the likes of people that they want to travel. And it is in the morning, even they are traveling in the evening, they are flying that they will be packing things. No, no, when you fail to plan, you will plan to fail. Learn how to plan. This is what I want to do on a Monday. This is what I want to do on a Tuesday. This is what I want to do on a Wednesday. When you don't have a plan, you don't have a life. Because the wave of life will just be throwing, blowing you here and there. Because you don't have direction. You are not motivated. Because looking at your plan will motivate you. Oh, I intend to do this at 5 p.m. and it's 12 p.m. now. You get to a stage in your life that when you know how to plan, when you know how to you know structure your day by day, your activities, you will just do it automatically without you looking at your calendar or your alarm to say if you're doing what you have planned to do. So you cannot be shouting no grief for anybody if you don't know how to plan your life. What do you want to use your life for, for when you don't plan it? Like, I don't understand. What do you intend to come out of a life that doesn't have any planning attached to it? By 2025, you want to have 5,000 euro towards something that you want to do or you intend to buy a car next year because you will need that car. But every week you get paid. You don't save. You are not planning. And you are saying no grief for anybody. Who is doing who? The people you are not grieving for or you that you are not grieving for yourself to move forward. Number four, negative talk. 
You are always talking negative about yourself. I can't do it. I don't think I'm capable of doing this. I don't think this thing is for my type. No, you're saying you cannot do something. When people now say she can't do it, you now get upset because you're already saying, you're passing on the message to say, I cannot do something. Still try, still try. And something that we always say is your strengths are what you invest in, your passion. When you invest time, passion, energy, consistency in your weakness, it can become your strength. So sometimes we look at strength because we did not nurture it. We did not, you know, help it to grow. So it will always remain as a weakness. So for you to, you know, say negative things to yourself because you've not been nurturing your weakness, negative self-talk, I can't do it. You don't even know how to do, affirm affirmations about yourself. I am bold. I am strong. I can do this. I will not be an hindrance for myself. Maybe that's another word we have to, you know, keep putting in our daily affirmations. I will not be an hindrance to myself. Sometimes external people are not your hindrance. You are your own hindrance because your thoughts, your, 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 your goals, your dreams, you have them first. It comes to you first. You're thinking, oh, I should be doing this. It comes to you first. So if you are not green for you and you are shouting everywhere, no green for anybody, what are you doing? Stop negative self-talk. Be bold, be confident, and be patient with yourself because our path differs, our journey, our timing differs. And how you record success should be about you. Of course, success is about houses and cars. How about how are you feeling? How about what you feel about yourself? How about the level of your patience? How about how you deal with people? How about your self-progress? How you feel? Are you sleeping better? That is progress. That is success. So those negative self-talk yourself because you see you're made from secondary school. They are doing this. They are doing that. So that means nothing good is happening in your life. Don't be like that. Stop negative self-talk before you start shouting, no grief for anybody. Number five, distractions and time management. Distraction is one thing. Time management is one thing. Because I only just want to share five points. I'm going to put them together. Distraction could be a lot of things. You know, your time management, if you don't do your time management properly, if you don't know what you are doing at a particular time, you end up doing things that are distractions. So what you're supposed to do at a particular time, you are not doing it. Those things that you are doing, they are distractions. What you are supposed to do that you don't do, that thing that you are doing is distractions. The one you are doing that you are not supposed to be doing, they are distractions. Your time management is very important. You cannot just be living. You know, you have to time manage yourself. When I wake up in the morning, I do school one between 8 to 9. I get back home. Maybe that's when you take your shower. Between 9 and 10, I do self-care. Between 10 and 11 or 10 to 12, I sit on my desk. What do you sit on your desk to do? I check my emails. I do my reels. I do my video. And at 1 p.m., I do school one again. When the children get back home, we do lunch. We do homework. We do this. We do that. We take a nap. Then, you know, that's how you have to have what you are doing. Because if you don't have what you are doing, if you don't know how to... Do your time management. You end up doing a lot of things, a lot of irrelevant things. That is why people will say they are on social media for two hours, for three hours. Doing what? Like ask yourself. Before you say, no grief for anybody, or ask your time management. What are you doing? It's like people who go to church and say, amen, God will prosper you. Amen, you will exert. Amen. They don't have a job. The Bible even says, we bless the works of your hands. You don't have a job you are doing. You don't have anything you are doing. They say, amen, amen to everything. So that is what you are doing when you are shouting, no grief for anybody. What are you doing positively that will make you to focus on yourself and not grief for anybody that wants to distract you when you are a distraction yourself? So pay attention to all these points. So you'll be able to know when you are self-sabotaging yourself or you are being affected or being delayed by external factors. So if I watch to this moment, you can share your own experience with me in the comment section. When it comes to no grief for anybody or no grief for yourself, what are the obstacles that you have encountered that have delayed you into progressing to another stage? Share with me in the comment section and subscribe to this channel if you haven't and click on the bell notification so that you'll be notified when I post new videos. Until I come to your screen again, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye, Warriors.